Salutations everyone, this is Razor here with my dad. Uh, this is actually his only th uh, representation on the internet, so I don't know how you're going <laughs> to feel about that. Very true, very true. Alright, so we're going to talk about Star Wars Force Awakens. We've both seen it twice now, and uh, we were able to pay attention to different things the second time around, and yes. uh, we both like theorizing about stuff that happens, and you saw it when it first came out in 77. Yes, I did. The first, the first one. 13 so. years old. Yeah. Um... So, how did you like the movie, first off? I thought it was great. Uh, it's um, I enjoy all the Star Wars movies. Even the ones people don't like, I still enjoy it. There's still lots of enjoyable aspects on them, especially yeah. the fighting lightsaber part. Uh, this one felt had more of a rawness to it that I really enjoyed. Uh, it felt very much more akin to the beginning of Star Wars, the, the flawness of the character mm -hmm. I really enjoyed. They weren't really polished. I didn't want them polished. I wanted them... Especially with yeah. Kylo Ren. Especially with Kylo Ren. He was very... He's very conflicted individual. It, he's, he was more like Anakin should have been in the prequels. Yes, I think so too. But Anakin was, by the way, just they started him way too young. They would have done better if they made him a little bit older. Yes. We both understand <laughs> that the prequels have flaws, but that A, they're canon, and that yeah. B, they have things to complement the rest of the universe. We're not one of those rich, Trish, right. Master Race people. No, just like, so I read a lot of books, and I like reading series books where it's like seven plus, but not every book or chapter you're going to like, but they're still part of the storyline. Just like all part of life is not all like great, there's things, things And you read matter. a lot of the extended yes, universe. Yes, I did. The Carillion series with Han Solo getting married and having the twins. Having twins, And then yeah. having the twins go to the Jedi Temple. And, and the Mara kind of Jade storyline. The Mara Jade storyline, Luke Skywalker things of... Him still growing a little bit more and not being... He didn't have a complete training as as the ones grazed up from infancy. Yes. So it, it was all enjoyable. It was an enjoyable series. So The Force Awakens, I thought, from what I know about the EU, um, the relationship with the remnant of the Galactic Empire and the Resistance slash the New Republic was kind of similar in that you still have this fledgling uh, part of the Empire that's still trying to, you know, do the bad guy stuff. Yeah, sure. And that was, I, I think that was, that was, you couldn't not do that because you still need to have this force of evil, but the Empire still isn't going to be what it was. So what did you not like about the movie? Because we both liked a lot about the film. What did you think was, you know, not so perfect? Well, and everything, well, first of all, the things that a lot of people I don't think would like about the movie is it's not hard to figure out. Yes. But that's okay with me. Uh, yeah. As long as the story's told well, it doesn't have to be something brand new. Yeah, the, I didn't wasn't surprised really about anything except for uh, the Millennium Falcon showing up the way that it did. I was surprised by that, and um, I, me too. And, and and just a couple a couple of other little things, but you know Ky who Kylo Ren is at the first scene of the film when. Mr. Old Guy was talking about, you know, how disgraced he was to his family. And it's like, he's obviously a solo. Yes. That, that's the only, what other family could you be talking about? Yeah, it was for, it, and the thing is, by mentioning that, it's, it's not something that could be spoiled because he's bringing us things exactly. from the get-go. Yeah, they didn't try to fool us at yeah, all, yeah. especially since they reveal that he's been solo when he's first talked to Snoke. Yeah, so it's, so not, a, it's not a leak. They it's weren't on pretending to surprise exactly, us. Exactly, since I knew they weren't pretending... I was okay to go along with that exactly. because that's what it was. It wasn't supposed to be this big reveal where we're all surprised. They, I think they did it well, especially since so many people are going to come in with their theories and stuff, and so many people aren't going to be surprised. So they tried not to surprise us with those right. aspects. So if the one thing I had picked at the beginning scene, which I thought was pretty powerful, is when uh, the guy shoots his, his um, laser at him and he freezes it midair. Yes. Wonderful effect. But it established to me that he was super powerful at the mm -hmm. time. As the movie goes along, you can see he's not quite as developed as you would expect him not to be so developed because he didn't complete his Jedi training. And that brings up two really key issues with this film. A lot of people were disappointed in Kylo Ren that he wasn't Darth Vader echelon of bad guy because everyone's going to measure up everything to Darth Vader. And this he's is like, movie one. He should not be. Yes. And he's young. And also, it's good that he's not, you know, this flawless, badass character. Yes. The fact that he has flaws, the fact that he's he's being drawn towards the light instead of a Jedi being torn towards the dark side. He's a Sith being drawn towards the light. Right, and it's a reversal of what you normally would see in the story of the good being drawn to the bad, as in the Attican story. Mm -hmm. Here, it's kind of a little bit in reverse. Also, what they need to establish, I thought, which was good, is Snoke's the bad guy. Kylo Ren's the conflicted bad guy who 
can go either way. We all know what happened to him here at the end to try to push himself towards for the bad. But I think it was important not to make him the ultimate bad guy and focused all on him. You needed somebody else who was the mastermind, the puppeteer. So yeah, I wasn't disappointed with how Kylo Ren was really at all. It makes sense with his character and his development. Like We don't know how young he was before he turned to the dark side. Yes. Did Snoke have anything to do with it? Yeah, and how did, how did Snoke even get to him where he was? Exactly. Were there other Jedi that, that Luke was training? They didn't specifically say so, but there could have been. Um, so the two most important characters in this trilogy are easily Rey and Kylo Ren. Yes, definitely. It's going to come down to them. So, And they have the biggest mystery surrounding them. Mm -hmm. Who are Rey's parents? Both of us are in agreement that... She's yeah. Luke's daughter. Yeah, I think it's clear by by the by several things actually. Uh, her little scene when she touches the lightsaber mm -hmm. and how the I, I'm sorry I don't remember the name of the 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 glass character, which was really well done by the way. Uh, things that she was yeah, saying Mazda to her, Lapita yeah, what, the things that she was saying to her, and Luke's reaction to seeing her was clearly on his face more so than just somebody finding him finally. So it, it, I'd be surprised, yeah. to be honest with you, not astounded, but I'd be surprised if it was other than his daughter. Yeah, and uh, there, there was a scene that I noticed uh, in the watering hole where uh, Ray goes to talk to Finn to convince him, and then Ma's like, who's the girl, to Han Solo? And then they cut away. So they had a conversation that we didn't see on very, screen. Very, very true. Either Han knew or Maz had suspicions about who she was. Yes. So... I think there are four possibilities f uh, covering all bases of who Rey's parents are. I I'm not counting. There's a fifth possibility that she was conceived by the Force, but I don't think they're going no, down the No, I don't, the know. I don't route. think they're going to go down the Midichlorian route again. Yeah. So, A, she's Luke's daughter. Yes. B, she's the twin, Han and Leia's daughter, which... They, there's an eight-year difference between Daisy Ridley and uh, Adam Driver. Right, and it seems apparent also that that's the case in, in, in the way they are. Yes. So that it might They may not be twins, but they might still be siblings. Siblings, yes. There was that one moment that I was able to focus on uh, in the second viewing. When he's uh, trying to torture her, um, he says, no, don't be afraid, I feel it too. Yes. What is he talking? Because that that comes out of left field, and it's never talked about again. No, it's not. I feel it too. There's like a familial c connection. Either we're siblings or cousins or something. Yeah, but I if if there was really a sister, and that maybe they just want to leave it up for the next movies, is I think he would have utilized that against. Yeah, her a I little think bit more. if she if he knew who she was and she was his sister, that he would have said that to her to try to get her to turn. You know, right. you need a teacher, I'm your brother, blah, blah, blah. And you can see partially how they they want you to guess who it is. Mm -hmm. Now, Kylo Ren changed and he went to the bad side. So you can see possibly them sending her off so she doesn't get seduced also. Exactly. Whether it was Han and Leia's or Luke's daughter, I think they both right. went to the same thing. And it seems apparent that, yes, whoever left her on the planet left her with somebody and th as life goes on, things didn't work out. She ends up alone. So maybe someone was supposed to take care of her and it fell apart. It, it looks like, because we back. don't see exactly who she's left with, but it looks like the Simon Pegg character. It does look like Simon Pegg character, the, the scavenger guy who buys all the stuff and gives her the food for Yeah, her. so, like, is he supposed to look after her, kind of? Or um, was she just basically, like, sold or, or dropped off? Like, how did she survive all those years, basically by herself? Yeah, she, she, then that's what makes her, and that's why I had no problem with her being so sufficient uh, mm -hmm. With the lightsaber, she was really good at the stat. She was well established from the get go. She can take care of herself. Yes, as somebody who survived all that period by themselves would have to be. Otherwise, they would have died. Exactly. So there's actually a third possibility. We know in the original trilogy there were three Jedi. There was Luke, Obi Wan, and Yoda. We see uh, Yoda die, and we don't know what happened to Luke. She could be a Kenobi. She could be a Kenobi, not necessarily Kenobi's daughter. But some could lineage, be granddaughter could be a lineage from Kenobi. Uh, Kenobi, he was hanging out on the planet. He's lived. He lived a life too, especially after the uh, the Republic fell. He disappeared for a while, mm -hmm. substantially to kind of look over. We the don't know what happened on Tatooine. We, we don't know. We, we know he communes with Qui Gon. That's the only thing we know he does. And I gotta admit, I would kind of I would enjoy that aspect of it. Because let's face it, Kenobi actually is, let's face it, a badass. Yes. Uh, look how many Sith he himself defeated. 
besides Grievous himself, he defeated two Sith Lords himself. Mm -hmm. You know he's a pretty well capable guy. And so it's pretty well established and also extremely strong. In and the explain force. the accent. And explain, <laughs> which most everyone in the Star Wars version, evidently, they all, everyone in that part of the universe drove from Great Britain, evidently. Yeah, I, I don't have a problem with her having the accent. Obviously, um, Finn doesn't have his real accent because right. he's a British guy, but he doesn't have his British accent. But Ray kept hers. I don't know. We don't know why they made that maybe, choice. Maybe she couldn't not. Do the accent well. Maybe she couldn't do a different or, or accent. Or maybe they just liked it. They don't have to explain why she no, has it. That, but, I don't, but most of the modern. Empire has a British accent themselves also. Yes. So hearing that accent in that universe is very common anyway. So she could be a Kenobi because we don't know. He Maybe Kenobi didn't know that he had a daughter. Maybe right. that, that could be a possibility. Uh, another possibility, she could be Kenobi's granddaughter and Luke's daughter. That's also a strong possibility. I agree. We don't know uh, what Luke, who he, who he would have been with. Uh, now, is it going to possibly they have another Mara J type comedian? Why, why is she so super strong so early on? Obviously, Luke wasn't that strong early on. So she like really accelerated very quickly in her powers of the force. Yes. Uh, Luke, he struggled for a while. You know, only about about to kill, but killed that he finally was able to get the lightsaber out of the snow where she was able to. to to repel the guy who's practiced, Kylo Ren, and beat him to the lightsaber. Her pull was stronger and than his. she was able to mentally block him yes. and was able to use the Jedi mind trick, like, day two. Right. And also, uh, the lightsaber itself. It's just a, a Jedi has to build it, but obviously yes. some Jedi put an impression on it because it in itself is not a, a mystical or magical uh, device. Right. And she was able to have that vision when she touched the lightsaber, which and we'll get to later. who was in possession of that lightsaber for such a long time was Kenobi, yes. and where did Attican get that lightsaber to begin with? And when she touches the lightsaber, we hear both Kenobis. We hear both Ewan McGregor and we both hear Alec Guinness say Ray's name. Yes. They, they actually took um, a line where uh, Obi-Wan says, afraid, and they took Ray out of that to make it to have Alec Guinness say her name. So... With a double connection with Kenobi as well as Luke, that would make sense. And it would be good about it because what they want to do in these most movies, and especially with this movie, is set you up for this is what it's going to be, ha ha, we all know how it's going to be, and then they'll flip the page and I'm um, your father Luke. So in this case, we could all think, okay, it's either one or the other, it's a Solo or it's a Skywalker, and then you do a little small twist, you make it a Kenobi. Yes. Which I think would be a nice little twist, I'm sorry for spoiling it for you, and if you happen to be right and lucky on that aspect. But I, I would, I think people would enjoy it a great deal, also. Yes, because be like, oh yeah, we we like Kenobi too. Yes, exactly. He's a well established. So the fourth possibility is that she was one of the Jedi that he was training alongside Kylo Ren, and she was able to escape. Yes, because we know they were trained at a very, very young age, mm -hmm. and maybe she was one of the lone survivors uh, when Kylo Ren destroyed everybody and everything. Yes, and so he just might have had her moved over there because. He didn't want her trained badly or good. He's he's done with this business because he thought he failed, like Obi Wan failed with Vader, right? Yeah. Uh, or should I say, Atticon, and so just moved her off, and maybe she was just that. So she could just be another brand new, strong with character Wh force, which would be extra somber because people see the connection that she has with Han, like you know, he's the father that you never had. So it's like, oh, maybe she's a solo, but now Luke's here to train her. Maybe she's her father, but then she finds out neither of them are her father. So she get, get that tragic aspect that, oh, you know, I thought I was a Skywalker, but I'm not. Right. You know, and then I was abandoned by some other people. And going on the thing of maybe she's an unknown family, what if she came from a family that did turn? And so he was afraid not to train her anymore. Exactly. Failed to Kylo Ren. Ooh, she's from uh, some... Uh, Sith Lord family line thought he'd give her a chance. Oh no, now I have to move her across, which would be a nice twist of bad going to good, kind of with the Kylo Ren uh, conflict. Right. And people people like that idea because that gives her reasons to be so strong with the Force. Like, oh, she had some training, but she was still old enough to remember, unless she got mind tricked or something. Well, and that's always, they could always explain it with a they mind could, block of some sort. But I don't like that approach so much. This is, I think, a key part of the film that I don't think a lot of people are talking about, the title, Does the Force Awaken? Mm -hmm. Snoke says that there has been an awakening. Have you felt it? And Kylo Ren says yes. Kylo Ren is strong. 
He's able to stop a laser, which we do not see in the prequels no. or the original and that's trilogy. why I thought he was an uber-strong character when he first came on the scene. Because we see Vader deflect Han's DL-44 blaster a couple bit, but he doesn't stop a blaster, and no one else does. Second of all, he's able to extract information using just the Force. Vader can couldn't do that. No, otherwise they would have done so, and then wouldn't have brought that little globey thing with the needle on it. Yeah, otherwise he would have tried on Leia, and it wouldn't have worked, and then he was like, oh shit, it's the daughter that I didn't yeah. know was born. Exactly. So he has power. So is the Force getting stronger, and that's why Rey is able to progress so quickly and that brings another part of it is the balance of the force we've been hearing about this for so long anakin was supposed to be the one and in a sense he did balance the force yes there were 200 jedi and only one sith and then he made it two and two that's that's a balance that is a balance yes and and then a third jedi popped up so he smoked one of them it's two and two again and then one of them dies, and then he kills the, the last Sith, so there's mm -hmm. just one and one, and then he just, he dies. So there is that sense of balance, but, but you know, maybe Anakin wasn't the chosen one, maybe it was Luke, because he was able to do what he did. But more importantly, is Kylo Ren the one from the prophecy? It's possible he's one of the prophecy, and another thing I was thinking about uh, dealing with Rey is, we know where Kylo Ren comes from. He comes from a direct descendant of of uh, uh, Attican Skywalker through his daughter Leia, right? Mm -hmm. Leia with a well-established ordinary space human being and Han Solo. Who is the mother of Rey? If if she's as strong with the Force or possibly in a Jedi with Luke, along with the Attican strong line, she could have two strong lines potentially, yeah. which would necessarily kind of bust her, boost her above, and make her a little bit more powerful. Let me know the explanation why she's more powerful. Her strain or her midichlorian count is even higher than. Than uh, Kylo Ren, right? Anyway. Which a lot of people like to shit on the midichlorians because, like, oh, now I can't be a Jedi because it's genetic. It makes perfect sense with the original trilogy because the Vader sprouted out two kids and they were both force sensitive. Oh, very much. It, so. It's the only way. To, one was developed, one wasn't. That's just it's all the it only was. way to explain it, and and the fact that you know there's only so many Jedi. We see all these different alien races, but usually they only pop out one Jedi each. Yes, it's according to what we've seen in the Academy. Yes, exactly. So, with the Force Awakenings, they kind of did this in the Force Unleashed video game line where the Force got super strong, where Starkiller is able to take down a Death Star with just the Force. So, is the Force getting stronger? Is an Awakening? Is it trying to balance itself out? Since there's the Snoke guy and Kylo Ren and Luke doing nothing, is the Force balancing itself? Right. Is it getting stronger? Right. Well, well another thing that's a little bit different off track with Simple, when they said the Awakening... Uh, they, they made it a point to show the change in Finn. And he stopped, as, as Kylo Ren's going by on the ship, he stopped and he looked straight at Finn. He mm -hmm. sensed something about Finn. In essence, he awoke from uh, training from birth, or from infancy at least. Indoctrination. Indoctrination. He was supposed to be basically the little drone kind of guy in the white suit. And all of a sudden, he flipped. What made him flip? Wouldn't that necessarily be costly be an awakening itself? Some people think that, that he's, you know, a Jedi, or he was trained, or he has a lineage, because we don't know who his family yeah. is. Yeah, but they're saying the awakening, maybe, it says the Force awakening, so you kind of think it has to do with the Force. And people wonder, why was Finn so good with the lightsaber? Rey makes sense, because she had the, the, the longbow the, trainer, yes. the, the, the staff. We know Finn doesn't have any saber training, but he was able to hold himself on his own against, granted, an injured Kylo Ren. Right. Also... We see his lightsaber. It's a different lightsaber than we've seen. It has the cross guard, and it seems very flickery and unstable. That's because his training isn't complete. Because Snoke says he has to complete his training. Yes, very much, yes. So I think it's a weak lightsaber. It's it's an, So he makes an old version, which is why it looks like a claymore. It has the cross guard, because, you know, that's, a, that's an old sword. Yeah, it's probably just an old design used with more updated technology, but still the design will limit or show its characteristics. Yeah, it, like the it is easier to make. So that's why it was so unstable and possibly weaker, because we see that in the extended universe. Which would coincide with uh, Return of the Jedi, because when Vader grabs Luke's green saber, he says, ah, your training's complete, you've created your own. Exactly. Which, of course, has to be the aspect you can't become a Jedi until you can make your own lightsaber, only they can really make one. Very much so. So, what is Snoke going to be doing with Kylo Ren to complete his training. Well, he's going to be a lot more powerful, we know, in the second one, because yes. they're probably going to jump things a little bit with Kylo Ren. He's going to be a little more darker because he killed his father now. Mm -hmm. So he's going to be a little further away from the light. Snoke's going to be, have his hands on him. He's going to make it a little bit more 
more deadly, a little bit more darker, and so he's going to be much more powerful, and he's not going to be the, the same person that Ray beat in the first movie here. Right. And probably going to have a, a stronger lightsaber or a new lightsaber or something. That wouldn't surprise me at all, especially mm -hmm. since, you know, that, that shock factor of seeing the cross guard is gone. But... The Knights of Ren. Who are the Knights of Ren? Because when Rey touches the lightsaber, she sees things. We don't know if it's the past, the present, or the future. Right, right. Was it when he destroyed the, the Academy? Was it something that's going to happen in the future? With We see him surrounded by the Knights of Ren, which we see early on in the trailer. Right. So I'm thinking that's the future. Also, we don't know when she sees Luke put the hand on R2. Is that the past or is that the future? And... Could, yeah, like I said, it could very well be the past with Luke putting something about, okay, here's the map, don't awaken until my daughter or my lineage comes in to kind of activate you just by her presence, because mm -hmm. that's when he wakes up, is when she finally makes it to that planet, or uh, what is going to be, and I noticed that, Ray, uh, excuse me, Kylo Ren is the only one with the lightsaber when they showed those knights, mm -hmm. so did they have it, and he's just had his out, Right, but it was still the cross guard one. So yes, it, you don't know about that. Yeah, exactly. We don't know where in the timeline that takes place, but I think the Knights of Ren are going to have a bigger role, oh, definitely, as well as Captain Phasma, which we almost don't see at all. You can kind of tell from the trailers that she was going to be barely in the film, mm -hmm. but even less so in the actual film. It's like she has only a few scenes, and does she survive the Star Killer base exploding because they put her in a trash compactor or? A garbage I, I can't see them wasting such a uh, good character with the, the nice look with a wonderful actress in there. Mm -hmm. It seemed like an awful waste uh, to not utilize yeah, that. She had to more. escape. She uh, had to how escape. can you not? Exactly. Um, I mean, let's face it, Kylo Ren should be gone by the <laughs> they how do you have time to save yeah, Kylo Ren? Yeah, how did Hux get yeah, to exactly. Kylo Ren? So yeah. so obviously these important characters, you don't want to waste them. Uh, if you're going to kill them or something like that, you're going to make it in a, in a good way. You're not just going to mm -hmm. let it happen oh, on, on the side note. Yeah, so she she, she got out and she's going to you know, be a, a much bigger threat. I would think so. In the next, she's not going to get caught off guard um, because some people were like, oh, she was supposed to be, how did she just turn down the shields at a random terminal? It wasn't a random terminal. No, and also she's the captain. She's the captain. She, she'd have access and you probably can access almost anything. Yeah. You have certain access. And, and there, the there has to be some reason why you, you would you know, lowered the shields, and there's got to be some reason for that. Um, uh, and a lot of people were complaining the fact that there was a third Death Star, and I, I can I can see why. First of all, it's the huge, it's a planet, so it's mm -hmm. not going to have the same structural disabilities of a, a built starship station, which um, was really weird in the original trilogy because it takes them like what nine plus years to build the first one, and then four years to build the second one, right. and it's like almost complete already. Um, but this was a huge threat because it took out the Hosnian system. The whole system, right. In one shot. Well, and it makes sense. How would you do that? Could you carry that much power on your own? No. So they basically traveled to wherever it needed a, a sun was available mm -hmm. and drained the sun to use the sun's power. And obviously a, a explosion, a supernova could obviously take out a great deal. So it didn't carry its own power supply, which made sense. It made it a little bit different. And I, was, right. I enjoyed it's, that to, aspect. For fi to fire a laser like that, you need a lot of helium. What's the biggest source of a helium? A goddamn it's, star. Exactly. Yeah. And and the fact that obviously you need to contain that energy and it's going to be unstable. So you're going to need you know some sort of regulator. So yeah, you can knock it out and blow and, it and up. And I think there was probably some effort to root Star Wars back into what people loved the most, which was the first three from May. Right. And so while it wasn't the same, there was still a lot of familiarity and people enjoyed that similarity aspect of it and regardless of what they would have done uh people would complain about it yeah and yeah. but you have to have some kind of major thing to bring a super overwhelming threat exactly and so only something that large and can take out to that level because would they be were at a disadvantage because the republic is backing the resistance yes. so you know they were disadvantageous in that fight so now that they knock out the hosnia system they destroyed the republic and the fleet and now Star Killer Base is destroyed. They're a little bit more even now. Yeah, we don't even know how big the First Order is. I exactly, because we know the Star Destroyer that Kylo Ren is in almost the whole movie is still going yeah, we strong. Don't, but was there 50 more or was there one more? We don't know how big they are. Exactly. So that brings us to the question of uh, Snoke. How big is this guy? He ain't that big. No, I don't think he's big. Uh, just like any type of I am the guy now, uh, whoever it is, projects himself into a larger amount. Uh, in the first movie we saw, like, they can be any size you want. In a hologram, there's Darth Vader about this size. So Snoke being, I am the supreme leader, 
it makes sense that his hologram would be larger than any type of life. And we see him scarred. Um, we don't know where he is, uh, what he's been doing, how old he is. So there's this mystery around Snoke because we know that, you know, there's always two Sith, an apprentice and a master. Mm -hmm. And there are no more apprentices and masters at the end of Return of the Jedi. At least we're led to believe. At a possible theory here is that Darth Plagueis never died. Palpatine's master. Because he had the force so strong with him, he was able to stop death. Yeah. He could have he could have pulled some kind of Voldemort action. Exactly. And, and then uh, kind of laid low. He was weakened in this whole thing, but he, because he was so strong in the force and he had the ability to like His body death, died, but he didn't die. And that would explain why he doesn't have a perfect body now. Exactly. It's a possibility. It yes. is a possibility. Um, otherwise, you know, where did this other Sith Lord come from? That I think is the best way to explain it. I mean, they could always give us a bunch of backstory and be like, oh, all right, I mean, you're setting a precedent here, but at least it's explainable. Right. And the, one of the things I would like if that's the case is it makes him more powerful than just some guy who who just happened to be past the mantle because right. the last guy's dead, so the spirit of darkness I'm gonna is going to read a bunch of somebody books. else, yeah. and all of a sudden I'm Snoke and I'm the supreme leader. If he had that knowledge, it makes him more powerful because he'd bring that wisdom and time all that gone with with him, mm -hmm. and so I, I kind of like it being an older character, if you will, uh, from the past, than some some guy who just picked up the mantle. Went, Ex exactly. He'd, he'd be at the same level, basically, as Luke Skywalker is now, if right. that's the case. Right, right. And so there's also other characters that are going to be in the rest of the trilogy. There's an opening casting call right now for right. episode 8, um, so we can't really hypothesize on those characters, but... Like like Poe, for instance, we don't know what big significance he's going to have in the rest of the trilogy. We know that J.J. Abrams originally had him killed at the beginning of the film, and then he changed his mind. Um, there are some people that thought that maybe Kylo Ren did something to him when he was interrogating him to get him to turn later as a double agent. I don't see that happening. That seems a little bit far-fetched, um, but... It, it is always. Po I don't think it's going to happen. I wouldn't necessarily like that well, to happen. Well, not especially how he reacted when he was escaped. Mm -hmm. He started to, just, just, uh, you know. So I don't see that either. I mean, you're right. That is always a possible subliminal thing, and he allowed him to escape because he kind of he knew automatically in his mind who's the who's the stormtrooper that helped him escape. He automatically went to Finn. Yes. So it's possible. There was enough there to say, okay, that still works later on along the line, mm -hmm. but maybe not. Yeah, so, so yeah, that's Poe. Finn is still unconscious at the end of this movie. When does he wake up, and what is the gap between seven and eight? Yeah, how many, how many years are they going to go? Two, three, six months? Is, is Ray going to be in the middle of training? Is she completing her training? Is, are they st starting off, you know, the second after Force Awakens right. ends? Yeah, and you're right. And there's going to be people who are going to say, oh, no, now this is just going to be uh, uh, Empire Strikes Back because instead of Hoth training, now it's going to be Luke with her. So there's going to be some similarities, but let's face the fact, she needs training. Yeah, and she Luke is not going to... Toss her away. Oh, it'd be he ridiculous. Knows. It'd be ridiculous to toss her away because once you, when it's the force has awoken, if you will, mm -hmm. then there's only two ways to go. And so, even though he might be scared that you know he 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 failed Kylo Ren, especially if this is daughter, he's not going to leave her basically with just uh, half cocked out there. You yeah, you have to train her up for her own protection because Kylo Ren and everyone else is going to be after her now. And yeah, he wants to make sure that she you know can't get turned because that's always you know the Sith way of trying to you know turn. Not people. to say they won't argue about it probably at the beginning of the movie for a little while, right? Until she convinces him or he learns, and or some, gets a visit from Yoda or something. And some, there, there was. There was a few things that we knew for a fact that were going to be different in The Force Awakens, and one of them was that women were going to play a bigger role. Yeah. Because that's the huge missing piece in the original trilogy. There are two women that aren't slaves to Jabba, Leia and Mon Mothma, and she's on screen for like five seconds. Yes. Um, unless you count that deleted scene in Revenge of the Sith where she's younger, talking with Bail Organa and all that. Yeah. But... We know that it's it's not great being a woman in the Star Wars universe, so we knew women were going to have a bigger role in The Force Awakens. And you, I was knowing this going in. I was looking and noticing there was a lot of women in the background. The first person in the entire movie you see holding a weapon is a woman. She's got a gun ready for the stormtroopers to come out. Yes, yeah. Well, and you see, right. you see female pilots. And so some people were were just unhappy that it seemed a bit pandering the way that they made Rey so good. But I don't have a problem with that. Because she's survived on her own. Right. She's force sensitive. Yes. 
and she's able to believe a lot faster than, say, Luke was. Right, she, she was. knew that, the, that you know what a Jedi could do. She was aware of this mind trick. She didn't know if any of this was true, but then Han tells her, and she's able to see all these things. She meets, sees Kylo Ren, and she's able to block him and stuff. And let's not forget, unlike Anakin and Luke, who have some introductory. Um, language courses with R2, Ray can understand BBA out the get-go. Yes, she can. Uh, which which fits a lot with the Attican part, because Attican's king thing was with he mechanics. He was yes. very much so. And even though this is part of the canon, in the book series of the twins, one of them is very mechanic sensitive. Right, right. So it, it her being that sense, her being so self sufficient. Now look, he had he had an aunt and, and uh, uncle to bring him up, but they kind of kept him ignorant. And you're just a farm boy, where she was on her own. We don't know when she was on her own. It didn't look like she was on her own from the get-go at eight years old. But regardless, at a very, very young age, so self-sufficient, it's going. she probably was using the Force without even realizing she was using the Force. Well, and yeah, we, she see, we see that in the Millennium Falcon. How would you pilot that? I don't know. And that's when I was like, oh, okay, so she's definitely Force-sensitive. She's oh, yes. definitely going to be a Jedi. And then when she pulls out the uh, the thing out of the Millennium Falcon to make the hyperdrive work, she's, she's like, how did I know to do that? Kind of thing. So she's good at fixing things. Yeah, she's very good. At, she's very good at mechanics, which goes along with a, a scavenger, if you would, mm -hmm. uh, knowing what parts this guy wants in order to get food. She's going to learn quickly which is a valuable part and what's not. Which, she also knew that uh, the compressor or whatever it was was put in the Millennium Falcon. Compressor. Compressor was put in the Millennium Falcon by that that guy that she sells her junk to. Mm -hmm. So she she and she knowledge also by the way that she was a pilot. When she when he goes, how are we going to get out of here? And she goes, not that piece of junk. This one, you got the pilot right here. So she very sufficient, much more advanced than Luke was at her age. Assuming that she's Luke's age or slightly right, older. right, right. She's like twenty one, but she might supposed to be nineteen or something. Right. And I think this definitely points more toward the Luke in her outside of the Leia and Han kind of thing because we we know in Revenge of the Sith, there's a deleted scene where uh, Anakin's communicator bugs out and he doesn't understand R2. He's like, I think bleep bloop means up, but it actually means down or whatever. So he doesn't understand R2 perfectly. And, and Luke gets the readout in his X-Wing, but he's able to get a rapport and understand R2 a little bit more so than Anakin was able to understand George. Yes. So that makes sense, her able to understand BB-8 out the get-go. And also the fact that she's so good at th fixing things and being a pilot is much more Luke- than it is Leia and Han. And another reason is since the Force, regardless, is, never seems to be able to stay in balance, but it's always trying to get in balance. Mm -hmm. Right now, the dark side has the upper hand. It makes sense that she'd be a little more powerful. In order to equalize it, you need a very strong character. Luke is the only one right now that can actually utilize her. So, especially if she's a Skywalker, she might be infused more with the Force power because you need the equalization, and you can't do that with a, someone who's weak in the exactly. Force. Exactly, and... She wasn't a Mary Sue, you know. She no. had she had flaws. She she didn't trust people, and she didn't want to accept her destiny when when Maz gives her the lightsaber. Right. Don't she, touch. Don't hold my hand. Yeah. yeah. She she's she's afraid, but she's not scared. She she doesn't run away from Kyla. She's she's shooting at him when she's running away in the forest. But you know when when he you know freezes her, obviously you know, you're not going to be you know all your wits with you. So she wasn't a flawless character, which I liked. Yes. And so here here's another question for you, and this is testing your internet knowledge. <laughs> uh, Ray X Finn, do we ship it? Mm, I'm sorry, I know what you mean. <laughs> is is there going to be a romance between Ray and Finn? I I personally find that too trite. I I hope they don't. I would love to have a strong male character, strong female character, be friends, strong friends. Uh, that that is a love in itself, and I don't think it's portrayed enough in the movies. And I think it'd be a nice. Oh, automatically, it's going to be a romance. Right. I, I I like that too. But what I really liked about the Force Awakens is they they definitely left it all open. And it makes sense that they like each other so much because Ray has no friends. She grew up all, all by herself. So she meets this person that's trying to do the right thing. She thinks she's part of the resistance, and he, he does all these things. And he's a stormtrooper. He doesn't have any friends. So, like, they're both their first friends. They have, like, a yes. you know a long-time childlike friendship, like, out of the gate. Right. So, like, I really liked that. And she kisses his forehead at the end, not the lips. 
which I like, but they still kept it completely open-ended right. whether, and, which direction they wanted which, to go. even if they do a romance with later on, that's still the appropriate thing to do because sometimes movies go from zero to 60 to exactly. the of the romance. Exactly. So it builds up a little bit. And also their whole friendship, everything is all about chaos. Everything's action, action, action. Yes. Okay, so for all we know, they might be brother and sister, and that's why they have that kinship, that bond, and that friendship going on. The mother... Might be that might share the same mother if she's Luke's daughter. Mm-hmm. It's that's a possibility. Uh, it, it everyone thinks Kylo Ren and her possibly might be brother and sister. But what if she is brother and sister with Finn? What if that's the relationship? So you still have the brother sister thing, but it's a little bit different. True, and they do like making Star Wars a Skywalker family affair. Yes. So it makes sense whether it's Kylo or Rey or Finn. I don't. Finn was good with the lightsaber automatically, but maybe not quite developed because he just awoke from being a drone, and so he wasn't on his own. Right. He was trained, and now he awoke, and mm-hmm. now he's slightly getting a little bit stronger. I'm not saying that's the case, but it's a possibility. It is. It is a possibility. I don't think that's that's going to be the case. Probably right. Uh, maybe I don't think he might. He might not be force sensitive. I know some people are going to want him to be, mm-hmm. and I really liked him as a character. I liked. I liked right. Ray. I liked Poe. I liked Finn. I liked everybody. Right. And now, now that you don't have Han Solo, you kind of need that person identify that here's the guy dealing with all these powerful people Mm -hmm. he's getting by and that could be Finn and Poe and it could be Finn and Poe who are those people to replace the Han Solo aspect of the regular guy with all these powerful people right because like it makes sense why Leia didn't go with the Jedi training because she had you know the Republic to rebuild so that that makes complete sense and um, because in the trailer if you remember when you hear that that Luke voiceover, which isn't in the movie, right. where he's talking about, is that might be in the next film where we hear that actually. But when you see uh, Luke slash Anakin's lightsaber, Maz is giving it to Leia. Yes. And so, but that that would they they changed their mind, so they just gave it you know they gave it to her early because they didn't want it to be this thing that just kept being handed off. So you know, there's the 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 thought that you know maybe. Maybe Luke doesn't have his green lightsaber anymore. Maybe he maybe he doesn't have a lightsaber. Or maybe he gives his to Rey. Or maybe maybe he gives it to Finn. We, we don't know. There's so many different things that they can go off of with Episode Eight. We don't know what the time's going to be. When Finn's going to wake up. Is Captain Phasma alive? Uh, you know, who Snoke is. How long he's been alive. Where he's going. How he's going to complete Kylo Ren's training. Is Kylo Ren going to be turned to the light side? Is is he supposed to be the one to balance the force? Is the force getting stronger? Is it awakening? There's so many different directions that they can go. So I'm curious, what do you think is going to happen in Episode Eight? Well, I think with Episode Eight is they're definitely going to both uh, concentrate or make it clear that Kylo Ren is going to be a stronger, more of a Sith character. Uh, like I said, establishing the the barrier of keeping you light is going to be strongly weakened by the killing of his father. Right, which shows development because he's definitely, you know, the Jedi is supposed to be calm, composed, defend before attacking. This guy's a hothead. He, yeah, he's he's passion, which is what a Sith should be. It's what more of what Anakin should have been. And remember, he wants to be Darth Vader. He yes. wants to be as powerful as Darth Vader. And Darth Vader kept his cool. I mean, even when he was doing something, he'd be choking them out. Yeah. He wasn't flipping out while doing it. Exactly. And that, that brings to the point... What does Kylo mean when he says, I will finish what you started? And exactly, what did he mean in general? Now, we kind of think since he wants to be dark, so he, he wants to be part of the dark. He feels the call of light, but he wants to be part of the dark. Uh, who knows? He could have just been being master of the universe. Right. And this, the does this guy. mean being a bad guy, or does it mean killing the Sith? Now, it could possibly could be. It, it, has he been a double agent this entire time? Maybe so, and maybe these theatrics and these losing the tempers was just for show for others. Because if you see that, then you know, yeah, he's a powerful guy, but he's he's really not as dangerous when he has full control of himself. Right. So it could be it could be a show. Uh, it could be some kind of vision that he had. So he has to sacrifice and do horrible horrible things. Right. That the one the one thing to convince and be turned all the way is to kill Han. So that's kind of the nail in the coffin. All right, this guy's this guy's yeah. with us. Kind of thing. I think they definitely think they're going to make him more of a control character because they're well established. They're setting up, bring him back for training. You know, he got beat. He's going to have something stuck in his craw for Ray. Let's face it, because he got beat and he know he was beat, and that's going to stick in his craw because he. How can you become the master until he? You know, he, this is somebody who's untrained and beat him. Yeah. 
And uh, so he's going to be upset about that. He's also going to get trained. Also, she has his lightsaber. She has his light. She's got it all. So he's going to have, and even if he even, has control. Even, even more he's so, got a she's Vendetta. Skywalker. And she's a Skywalker. And I think he knows something a little bit now, uh, based off her defeating him, her grabbing the saber above him. She's just not somebody who's Force-sensitive. He right. knows she's something to be reckoned with because she beat him. Let's face mm -hmm. it. We can't get over the fact that she beat this guy who is much more trained than her. And that's going to give him a lot of self-doubt also. Not only does he want to get her, but he's also going to have a lot of doubt when facing her because he's going to probably be a little hesitant because mm -hmm. she beat him once and that's going to be in his head. Yeah, and Snoke's probably going to tell him that, oh, she's probably training with Luke right now. And, you know, so he's going to think, you know, put this idea in his head kind of like Vader was that Obi-Wan has taught you well, not knowing that Yoda also trained him right. kind of a thing. I, I, I do definitely think there's going to be another uh, lightsaber battle between the two of those. Well, yes, whether we they do, wait till nine or they, not, we don't know. The Star Wars loves the mono mono business. Uh, they've done it on the prequels very much, so very well done too. Mm -hmm. With the when you have uh, Attican against Obi Wan, and, and and you know you, you have uh, Grievous against Obi Wan. You, you, and then when he killed Dooku, Dooku, uh, and also maybe we might see a little change in her saber. Her, I'm glad they did this. They didn't make it fancy like we saw in the prequels with the lightsabers. It was much more of a hackum type of business, mm -hmm. which somebody who's untrained, that made more sense. It was much more of an emotional ferocity yes. thing. Kylo Ren was more unsureness and scared. And hers, injured. And injured. Because Chewie shot him. Her, she, was, she was awakening with it. It was Hers was adrenaline. Yeah. Hers had some emotion. Very, it was very much an emotional and, and he was fight. And they were losing the fight because Star Killer Base was being destroyed. Right. So it was, it was pure. She had all the momentum. Right. It was all about force, I think. Raw raw force and but i think her technique is going to be polished up and ren's going to do more control mm -hmm. so i think we can see a much different lightsaber battle if we do have one in the next movie between those two yeah that'll definitely be quite interesting and then there's the idea of you know, the whole thing with uh, with snoke was he the one that ordered the clone army because we still don't have that established, right? We haven't had that established because we know that Master Sifo-Dyas yes. is the one that the Kaminos think ordered the army, and that uh, Jango Fett was recruited by Darth Tyrannus to Count Dooku. But we still don't know who ordered the army. Was it Plagueis setting this entire thing up, uh, or was it Palpatine this whole time? That hasn't really been established, but there's there's different ways that they can go. And they did mention that a clone army was still a possibility in right. Force Awakens. Right. And Snoke is very much afraid uh, of Luke Skywalker getting back in the picture yeah. because he's afraid of the Jedi rising again. He can feel it. Evidently, he has some kind of foresight, foreknowledge, prognostication that if the Jedi come back, this throws everything into doubt. Right. We the, Some people are like, why does he want to kill Luke when he's in hiding? He's afraid of the capabilities of Luke should he want to get in the fight and who he can train. And who he can train, especially, I think, more so than Luke, than the, what Luke effect will have on Rey. development of war and Rey. Yeah. And so maybe Rey is the one. Rey is the one. She's shown very much so that... She yeah. could potentially be super powerful from what we've seen with her untrained aspect of things. Train her up a little bit more. We're not really going to sure we're going to see from her. So I think it's going to concentrate. Uh, I think it's kind of going to be a combination. Now we had the Yoda Luke relationship, but they were strangers to start off with. If this is his daughter, there's going to be conflicts while he's training yes, her. Yes, very much. He train her, but doesn't want her in danger. And so there's going to be that whole aspect of you abandoned me business, or I didn't know you were gone, whatever they're going to be. It's going to be very emotional, very character driven between those two. Yes. Along with the training part, which is good stuff. If you write a good storyline, that's all compelling. Doesn't matter if it's in space or in a cowboy scene. That's it's the character-driven stuff that people really enjoy. Yeah, with with the setup and with Han dead and, and everything, and now Luke's in the picture. Uh, the next movie could be even better than Force Awakens. Oh, I think yeah, for Bill. Now we're going to see Luke more. Let's face facts. We're going to see Luke more. Yeah. And where are they going to bring Luke? W what level? He's the last Jedi. You want to call him the Master Jedi because he's mm -hmm. the only one. But it's been thirty years. Uh, what has Luke been doing in those thirty years? How good and how great has he become? Uh, is he, he's, he's shy about doing this stuff, but we're not sure exactly how powerful Luke is. We have to assume right. he's somewhat level with Snoke a little bit more of a Yoda ish type of thing, but we still haven't seen him in action. I can't imagine that they're not going to give the audience the excitement of seeing a lightsaber in Luke's hands right? A against the bad guy. Yeah. Anybody, a anybody, whether it's Kylo Ren or somebody else, we're going to see Luke have an action scene with that lightsaber because I can tell you the 13-year-old in me can't wait to see Luke 
yeah. being the Jedi gods, basically, exactly. of the lightsaber and kicking butt. And yeah. I'd be shocked if they disappointed the audience because they know that's a momentum building point. Especially since they haven't disappointed. Every time, you, first time you saw Han, first time you saw Leia, first time you saw the Millennium Falcon, crowd went fucking ape shit. Yes. Like the time where Aragorn sliced the Orakai's head off after killing Bor- Boromir. Right. And Luke hasn't had his moment. All we see is his face, his reaction towards Rey. Yeah. And we know we're going to get a, a Luke power moment, if you will, yes. is going to come down the line. He's going to use the Force to do something insane or have an amazing saber fight. And what will happen to Luke? Will Luke be be a character after the first... Will they kill Luke in the second movie? Does, does he go Obi-Wan? Does he go Obi-Wan? Uh, I hope they don't do it too early because uh, even if you train her up, you make her all by herself uh, without the council, without somebody there. Yeah. I don't like that. Uh, he can have a smaller role. He can even have him not even be in the movie, but I think it's important to still have him there for a while yes. before you get rid of that character. And I think he can trust her to carry on the Jedi legacy because let's not forget what Han said is that people thought that he was, uh, I mean, the people closest to him thought he was trying to find the first Jedi temple, which is where he ends up at the end of the film, which is uh, how R2 wakes up because he had the rest of the map in his databank from when he plugged himself into the Death Star in A New Hope, which is how Kylo Ren has that beginning part of the map in the first place. What role would this temple have? Yeah. What, what He was going there for a particular reason. It wasn't just some place to hang out and hide away. Right. He was searching for it for a purpose. Because I think it's 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 equal part light and dark, is what I think. It's, it's even with the dark side and the light side because it's the first temple. And maybe her training could be a little bit better than his in a swamp because now she has the official grounds, the philosophy, the yes. mechanisms, if you will, in order to become even a better, more powerful, more prepared Jedi. Right. We don't know what other temples he went to or what he had been doing. All we know is that somehow this old guy on Jakku had the piece, missing piece of the map. Did Luke give it to him? Did he find it? We, we still have no idea about, about this character who gets murked in the first five minutes. No, we don't. I don't know what role it plays. I mean, Maxito is kind of a big actor to lose right away. Yeah. And maybe he just wanted to be in the movie. Uh, so it's always nice to see him. And he might have a role in Rogue One. And, and it, would, it would be make a lot of sense that he'd have a role in Rogue One. Because obviously... He is important enough to have this map. Wherever he gets it, right. he has this map. So that doesn't just happen, oh, hey, take this kid. Yeah, obviously he has to be like 35 years younger, so he has to have a different actor, but to have so that character. You, yeah, exactly. And so it makes sense it having makes somebody sense. as old as Maxito in there, uh, that character be in there, so he can be. You, you, you glimpse of this guy now, right. and now Rogue One, you'll you'll actually see him more of an action. Plus, you know that the Disney execs are going to want to have a tie-in with, with the Rogue One, not just have it to the Ridge Tridge. Of course. They're going to want to have something that they share, like There's whether be it be a character. spaceship or a descendant of a character or somebody. Right. We like, know that possibly Biggs or Wedge is in Rogue One, so that ties it in more so to the original trilogy, but we don't know if it's going to have a relationship or impact on the new trilogy that's going on right now, or right. what the rest of the two spin-off films are going to be. Right, and in what this Rogue One, there might be aspects of the tie-in to this next movie. Character they introduce here mm-hmm. might show up in Episode Eight. Very much so. It yeah. could be any anybody they want. It could be an alien, or who knows? Yes. Maz is four hundred years old. Maybe she's in it. Yeah, Maz is Force. She knows about the Force. She's not yes. a Jedi, but she knows the Force. Yes. Which anybody could be born with the Force potentially. But you're not a Jedi unless you're trained. But maybe she could have been one, but she just didn't go that route, kind of like Leia. Yeah, or or at least did the readings and was you know taught about them, even though she isn't force sensitive. And so it makes so. a lot of sense. Make her been around. She's been running this for I don't know a thousand years. What I yeah. think Han said. Yeah. Yeah. And so there's somebody who can be unchanging like Yoda in looks exactly, and just be around there so you have that connectivity between things. Very much true. So, yeah. It'll... And it might explain. She said, how'd you get that lightsaber? Oh, that's a long that's story. A long story. Well, obviously, it's a story that's going to be told somewhere down the line. Possibly. Possibly. I mean, it, it is kind of far-fetched because he got his hand chopped off at Bespin, you know, wor- it fell underneath the clouds. What's underneath all of that? And mm-hmm. you know, who went to find it? I mean, she knows the Force, so maybe she sound somehow drawn to it or someone else found it and it just got like traded around or something yeah well we don't know what happened right after uh there's a lot big gap between uh empire strikes back and yeah, Return of the yeah Jedi. Four, four years I think. and and for all we know luke luke went on a little searching expedition a few months later uh, it's it's hard to tell yeah. but uh definitely that's they they've well established that lightsaber isn't just a tool like i said it's just a tool but it's been imbued with something yeah uh, it sparked something it unlocked 
in essence, an awoke another aspect to the awakening. Yes. Uh, when Ray touched it. When Ray touched it. It won't do that for anybody else. No. So Luke, this all might have been part of, of uh, should I say, scene of the future that he knew this would happen and therefore laid down the breadcrumbs when she was ready to pick up those breadcrumbs and follow to find him. And so he might have been anticipating her all these years and then she finally showed up. Right. We don't know if this was a map to Luke or just a map to this Jedi Temple that a lot of people thought Luke was going to. Right. So there's still a lot of questions to be answered. I imagine the sets that are going to come up with this temple. I'd imagine, I'm hoping for something really nice because yeah. it's supposed to be super ancient. Yeah, very, very true. Very true. I mean, they'll use one of those old Ireland castles because that's where they shot the island. And for all we know, we might get a little flashback of characters who've been long past since you have the temple. Wouldn't their spirits necessarily be easily be strong in that area it, and they may not possible. necessarily do that but i definitely wouldn't be surprised if we see uh a, we haven't seen the old glowing blue spirit person in this right. last movie and that is something that's part of lore and, and it, why would it disappear now exactly they come out like avatar reincarnation spirits like here comes here comes shock t and keanu yeah. mundi and yeah. plo Koon. it's not like once you're dead doesn't really mean you get older so, so why can't you now how are you going to do it with other characters it's easy to do with yoda uh mm -hmm. obviously but uh, you don't know what they're going to do with that. And maybe it could be some ancient Jedi that might be making an appearance in, in, the, in the glowing blue spirit form. Or they can go to Extended Universe and Kyle Katarn pops out of nowhere. <laughs> Why not? I think they're probably going to probably stay away from anybody else's idea. Yeah, yeah. I mean, own. they took the Ben name from Luke's kid and gave it to Han and Leia's kid. And they, they kind of had a, a Star Killer base kind of thing. I can't mm -hmm. think of the Sun Destroyer. Or something like that. So they, they haven't borrowed really much, but they've had some similarities. I think they're going to stay away from it, especially since it's oh, it's not canonical. And the, the original right. name for Force Awakens for a long time was Shadow of the Empire. And they don't want to get that confused with that book and that video game from the N64. Right, of course. They want it to be all their own. Uh, but they still might borrow aspects. In the, the book series you mentioned earlier that I read, there was this plant that would stop the Force. And so you can see oh, that yeah, in the yeah, character. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, what, if that, what if they bring that plant back in order to all of a sudden, okay, now, you know, you don't want anybody to access this. And yeah, so, they can take ideas right. but not storylines. They can take ideas and storylines because, you know, there's nothing wrong with picking a little bit this, that, and the other. But I definitely won't think they're going to want to make it all their own because they don't want anybody to go, oh, hey, I read that in that book six years, seven years ago, yeah. and that's what they're going to do. So they might borrow aspects, but I think they're really going to do their own. This is our own version yeah now. nobody We're has not. idea what's gonna happen. we have yeah. no idea we no, just I like don't. to speculate but it's because everyone loves to speculate yeah, when it has especially fun especially when it's something like star wars. oh hey i was right or oh yeah. i got that Here's wrong the teaser trailer bba yeah. oh my god uh, he's the new sith lord yeah you know? <laughs> exactly right you know, yeah i can imagine there's gonna be everything i still think there's probably people that think jar jar is gonna make an appearance down the line yeah 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 he's gonna come out with his yeah three-pronged lightsaber and it's gonna be rainbow color yeah yeah or you know snark flick takes off a mask and it's hey i got you you know, yeah. so it, it's I Kylo Ren becomes the pod racing champion. Yeah, it, no matter what, people are going to speculate to the nth degree of, hey, they got that pretty close on to, you know, it's crazy. Doctor Doctor Seuss is the Sith Lord. I mean, it's it's you're going to see all kinds of crazy stuff with things. So, yeah. but it's that's what the fun part is. I mean, that's just as enjoyable. And seeing what happens is the speculation in your own imagination what things might be. How would you have write your story? Because that's what we all enjoy. We have our own little universe. And that's part of the reason why people have a hard time with any new movie. Because your Star Wars is a very personal thing. They create it in their own head, yeah. that universe. And if it doesn't fit into exactly what they think should be, they're automatically not going to be happy with it. Right. And if so you... it's the good and the bad, the light and the dark, if you will, of yeah. the horse. So, yeah, we don't know what's going to happen these next. They're going to surprise us. And sure. maybe we'll be... Kind of close on some things. On 1%. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. You're lucky. Yeah. You're lucky. Yeah, yeah. Jar Jar is going to be a pod racing champion. <laughs> um, so thank you, Dad, for... Well, my pleasure. Me. Thanks thanks for doing up with me. Hopefully, I, this won't be too often that I do this. But and, I appreciate uh, you Yeah, so now we have to wait a year for Rogue One and then a year and a half for Episode Eight. I'm looking forward to it, and I'm sure uh, our theories will fly by constantly as time and things get leaked. Every week, there's going to be a new theory. I <laughs> oh, guarantee you. As soon as that first trailer hits, it's all the theories are going to be rewritten once again. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, Yoda's coming back. You yeah. know, he's, he's General Grievous is going to be fused with Darth Maul. Yeah, sure. Why not? It's, it's, I, I wouldn't be surprised if we see that dual light, that lightsaber stick thing. Possibly even Ray. Yeah, Ray might get a new lightsaber and it's right. double-ended like her staff. Yeah, she has the experience with it. Why not? She, she definitely does. I think it would be kind of fun. Yeah, so thank you all for watching. And uh, leave your theories or whatever, your half-baked, out-of-context stuff. 
and we'll uh, we'll we'll see you in like a year or so. So yeah.